name is Joe DeFranco, and I built DeFranco's gym with one thing in mind, and that is to bring out the very best in every single athlete that walks through these doors. Using the latest scientific research and an insane atmosphere, my staff and I are able to help any athlete achieve their goals. Now, for the first time ever, we're opening up the garage doors and we're giving you a behind the scenes look at what goes down at one of America's best gyms. Welcome to DeFranco's Uncensored, where our athletes are driven beyond strength. Good afternoon, and welcome to the world of the WWE EA all day, okay? Let me tell you something real quick. EA is definitely the biggest character in this gym. For me, it's become a way of life, you know? EA all day is kind of a persona that I've, I've developed, but in reality, it's who I am at this point. Realize, 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 all right? We knew that, you know, he was he was strong on the microphone. And the realest guy in the room is telling you right now that the realest workouts in the world take place at the realest gym in the world, DeFranco's gym. Believe it or not, all of that comes very second nature to me. That's my gift from God. I mean, I write this stuff down, somehow I memorize it, and it just buzzes out of my mouth. And that's how it's going down like a hole in the ground, okay? Have fun and more or less make light of the person or the character in which I am. So I never take myself seriously and and when I'm in this gym, I try to keep a light atmosphere and, and get after it in the same sense. He adds a nice balance to this place because although, you know, it is very serious and, and people come here with real, real goals and they want to achieve, you know, real stuff in their athletic careers, it's still family type atmosphere and there's still a lot of busting back and forth and to have him in here who's the, you know, the ultimate ball buster, the ultimate character, definitely adds balance and, and prevents it from getting too serious. Kick rocks, go punch yourself. I probably spend more time in this place than my job when I had it and my house that I sleep in. You know, I work out, I end up fooling around, I, I shoot the shit with the guys. I hang out here, you know? This, this, to me, is a home away from home. It's a sanctuary. You know, it, there's never a stressful day in here. At the end of the day, we're all really lucky to be able to spend most of our day here. And I think the, the comic relief that he adds helps kind of put things in perspective and it's it's a great balance for the gym. Without Joe, I, I wouldn't, I, Lord knows where I'd be. I wouldn't be in jail and I wouldn't be in the gutter, but I, I wouldn't be here looking as good as I do, that's for sure. Here I am, a guy who loves this gym, and I get this dumbass tattoo that people give me heat for. You know, why did, why'd you do that? I mean, I love working out here, <laughs> why not? EA definitely has one of the uni most unique variety of tattoos I've ever seen. 21 was my high school football number. And this is my prison tattoo. Back when I was never locked up. I can't say I agree with all of them. I don't know how much thought was put into the tattoos. Being awesome, that's the only reason I did that. Just, just being awesome. From the mustache on his finger um, to my logo tattooed on his thigh. Uh, it's a guy lifting weights. It seems pretty cool to me, so. I mean, I have some, I have some dumb tattoos, you know, and, and, and that's not the dumbest one. Again, I think it just speaks volumes about him being a character and being an individual. I guess I started training with Joe when I was about 14 years old. It's, I'm, I'm about 10 years deep now, and uh, it's been paying dividends for me ever since. EA originally came here as a, a high school junior preparing for his senior year, even though he always told me from day one, he told me he wanted to be become a professional wrestler. He was originally here to prepare for his senior year in, in high school football because he did play for a very small school that was kind of like the Bad News Bears of New Jersey. I mean, I knew what I wanted to do when I grew up, but football took over for me in high school. It was a lifestyle and and, and I just, I wanted so badly to play college football. He came here and I think being in this atmosphere and, and not being intimidated by the bigger name kids that were here. Guys like Brian Cushing were in here training and, and you know EA would be working out in the same group. The only time success comes before work is in the dictionary, you know, so you gotta work at it. Somewhere along the line I must have made somebody upstairs happy because my life has been a blessing. I, I had the opportunity to play college football, go away to college, you know, um, and then from there um, manage Hooters. On Monday nights at Hooters I would turn the volume on to Monday Night Raw. I would have the whole restaurant watching wrestling on Monday nights. You ask me in the fourth grade what I want to be, I'm telling you I want to be a pro wrestler. And that probably was the standard for most of my life, you know, and you couldn't tell me any differently. I'm a person of faith and I believe 
that you know everything happens for a reason and it's and it's no shit that Joe started training Triple H, you know, Paul Levesque, the COO of the WWE. I came in this gym and I trained my ass off and I let Joe see it. I put together a video of all my workouts, my maxes, you know, I did a 52 inch box jump and you're in DeFranco's gym and you see me working out and it's intense. Then at the end of the video, I'm standing on the Hudson River and I cut what was the most important probably two minutes of my life. I cut a promo, I hand it to Joe and I say, this is what I want you to show to Triple H. And I had not asked him up till that point. He did his thing, he was training, he, was, he always was into writing writing promos and writing insults down and, and making videos of himself, whether it's singing or uh, cutting a promo, it's just what he did. He had an idea of what I was doing. He's not a dummy. He saw me working out, he saw me filming it, he heard, but I didn't mention it to him. When I finally finished it, I said, watch this, and if it's good enough, you show it to Triple H. Sure enough, he watched it, and it was good enough, and he showed it to Triple H. When you do something you love, and you put that kind of work into it, you hope that you know it, it doesn't go unnoticed, and, and that's exactly what happened. I think the most surreal moment of all of that was when I got the phone call. Um, from an individual, an executive at the WWE, saying that they saw my video and that Triple H would be calling me later in the week. I get a phone call from Triple H and he tells me that they're gonna put me on a plane, send me to Tampa and have a tryout with the WWE. And I've been, you know, what they call an OD, an original disciple of Joe's forever. And it, it just goes to show you, man, you stick around this place and things happen. He's got a long road ahead of him, but you know, that long road starts with one step one day, so I said focus on the day-to-day, -day. keep doing what you're doing, be the best every single day, and eventually those days are gonna add up. When I get out there, uh, you know, it's not so much talk about it, it's be about it. So all that I could say about myself and my confidence and what I bring to the table, it doesn't mean anything unless you show them. So that's all I could do, and, and that's what I'm gonna have to do. And hopefully, we're talking about him in a couple months or years, you know, being a big name in the WWE. There's nothing I can see myself doing in this world that would make me more happy than being a professional wrestler. I'm a lifer in this gym. My boyhood dream was to be a professional wrestler. He starts training the COO of the WWE. It's history from there. Next time on Driven Beyond Strength. When Giuseppe first came in here, he, um, he was dealing with colitis and, and a lot of issues he was having with that. He wasn't able to work out, um, hold down food. My doctors thought it was colon cancer. And when, when you're a 17 year old kid and someone tells you you have colon cancer, it just, it scared, it scared me. I started losing so much weight, started losing my hair. And I was, and my doctors told me football, my football career was over. My father always told me that like, to achieve your goals, it's not just gonna come to you, you gotta work hard at it. Started here at 190 pounds and now I'm 230 pounds. And the first day I was here, I couldn't even bench 95 pounds and I'm doing 275 pounds for, for reps. If you look at Giuseppe from the day he walked in until now, he has literally made a complete 180, which we're all very, very proud of. For me, that's a huge achievement because I get to train with all professional athletes, and especially with the number one trainer in the world. The confidence has gone through the roof. He's training at the same hours as a lot of our NFL athletes are. When I came to the gym, the first thing Joe told me is like, you can't be shy here. If you're shy here, you're not gonna make any friends. And since the first day, I'm, I'm the kid that talks to everybody. I'm always the first one to introduce everyone. And that made my confidence build up so much higher from me always thinking that I can't do something to my mentality now is like, I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna get it done. He made this gym better. Having a kid like that with that attitude and, and seeing him overcome what he overcame was, was motivation for even some of our NFL guys. Last Thursday, I went for my last checkup with my doctor and I gained 65 pounds in six months since I've been back to the doctor and he was amazing. Like he just asked me what I did and I was like, Joe DeFranco got me back to where, I, where I've been.